In today's video, I want to talk about a dilemma I had recently about what Nikon camera to take on a trip to Europe. I needed a travel camera that was one, travel friendly, two, capable to take, uh, you know, your family photos, and three, wouldn't attract attention because these are fairly big cameras. I'll go over the list of Nikon cameras that I could potentially take on my European trip. Here I have the Nikon Z9 and the recently introduced the Nikon Z6 III. It smells oh so good. And then there's this camera, the Nikon D3100. These are my personal cameras that I use professionally for this YouTube channel and my event photography business. Quick story, when the Nikon Z6 III rolled out in July, I had a stroke of good luck with the camera's arrival. My local camera store called me the same week as my trip that the Nikon Z6 III had arrived at the store. It was the first week of the rollout in July. I was excited that now I had a camera I could take on my trip to Europe. Exciting. But days before the trip, I had a hard choice to make about what camera to take. Watch next to find out which camera I chose. But let's start off by me introducing myself. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vaughn. I've been away from YouTube for a while. I had to work my full-time job, my weekend photography business, and plan my vacation in Europe. But yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Let's get started. Here I have the Nikon Z6 III, which is also new, and it checks most of the boxes for a travel camera. It's perfect for travel with its 24 megapixel, excellent autofocus, and video capabilities. Don't forget about all those lenses you can use for places like Paris, London, and Bilbao. It's a city in Spain. Yeah, I know it's hard to say. Next up is the Nikon Z9. It's too bulky, so you probably already figured out it was gonna get left behind. Now for my most cherished camera, the Nikon D3100, a crop sensor camera. If you watch any of my videos, you'll know this camera is my favorite Nikon camera of all time. It was my first love. And as love goes, I had to find another camera to give it a lifeline. After all, this camera is 14 years old. Nikon wasn't known for video back then. So I added a iPhone 15 Pro Max to the mix to help out with the video because the Nikon D3100 video isn't that good. Many of you are probably saying, why didn't you just get a Nikon ZF? My wife, I don't wanna hear it again. Another camera, how much did that cost? You know the routine if you buy cameras regularly. I have about four or five myself. After watching the rest of this quick video, you'll know whether my decision was smart or idiotic for picking this D3100 and the iPhone Pro Max combo. Please subscribe if you want to get more videos about Nikon cameras and how to use them. Now for the reasons I chose the Nikon D3100 and the iPhone Pro Max lineup. Reason number one, capabilities. The Nikon D3100 was first announced in 2010. This Nikon D3100 is a bare bones camera that is a DX or crop sensor camera that has a 14 megapixel sensor. Think about it for a moment. 14 megapixels is enough megapixels if you're not doing any serious cropping. Plus the photos you're taking on the trip are usually for social media or for Facebook, you know, for people in my age group. And if you're still doing photo albums, then this is the camera for you. Remember, you're on a vacation, not a photo shoot. I love this camera because it's great for beginners and it teaches you to do compositions better than cameras with higher megapixels. Want to learn the rule of thirds? Here you go, no cropping allowed. Let's move on to my favorite feature of this camera. I want to talk about its dial. Look at that. See that dial? It's got different modes. It's got a program mode, shutter mode, aperture mode, just like your normal camera. You just even got presets mode for landscape and portraits. This makes it easier to get shots without guesswork. I'm a manual shooter myself, but this camera lets me take the day off. 
Plus, if I find a few questionable shots, I can fix them in Lightroom. Lightroom wasn't that great back when I first purchased this camera. And I just used the Nikon software, the NX software, because Lightroom cost a pretty penny back then. And plus it wasn't that great. For the rest of the capabilities of this camera, I will do a quick overview. Here are the specs. No flip screen. It has a HDMI port, very simple. And that's about it, folks. The camera does, the video is limited on this camera. It just does uh, HD at 1920 by 1080. And videos don't look that great, so I'm not even gonna show you one. For this trip, I used my iPhone 15 Pro Max and the D3100, and I didn't have any regrets. Next, I wanna talk about the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I will list the capabilities of this camera in the descriptions because the features have already been widely covered. iPhones use computational photography to enhance photos using advanced algorithms and image processing tools. These tools run in milliseconds between pressing the shutter button. I hear you out there. You're saying this type of AI is ruining photography. It works when you're taking a break from dialing in the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. Plus, when you're on a tour bus and you come across a landmark, you don't have time to readjust your settings on your photography camera like this D3100 or even the Z63 if you decide to take it with you. Plus, you don't have to worry about missing a shot because a DSLR is out of focus or the camera doesn't want to act right at the moment or you don't have the right lens attached or the ISO isn't right for the conditions or the white balance is bad. You Are you getting it now? The iPhone was a joy to use in Paris where things happen fast. I just so happened to go to Paris two weeks before the Paris Summer Olympics. It was crowded. Please subscribe so you can view more fun videos about Nikon cameras, new and old. Reason number two, travel friendly. When I was packing my bag, I noticed that the Nikon Z63 took up a lot of space in my camera bag. I was packing for an overseas flight and you know how you have to pack for those to tight. These carry-on travel bags are ultra small now. A Nikon Z63 is larger than a D3100, and I would need to carry larger lenses, which take up more precious space in my bag, which I didn't have. You don't want to check a camera bag to go onto the plane because you may never see it again. My daughter and her husband went to Spain last year, and the airline placed their check bag on another plane by mistake. They didn't receive their bag until the end of their trip. I didn't want that to happen to me. With this iPhone Pro Max, it fits in my pocket. It doesn't take up space. When I'm using it, I just have to be aware of my surroundings. And partner, don't hand your iPhone to someone who casually asks to take your photo because you may never see it again. Now this one issue caused me to panic. I was watching a lot of videos about pickpockets and crooks targeting people overseas and how they were snatching expensive cameras. I just so happened to see a video where Manny Ortiz was a victim on a train for his Sony equipment while he was overseas. While in Paris, the crowds were large due to the Olympics starting later in the month. There was a few times where someone asked me to buy something and followed me and my wife around trying to get us to buy something. So I didn't know whether they wanted my cameras or they were just trying to get us to buy something. While walking through the crowds, I was bumped constantly at the airport at Windsor Castle on excursions. And these are opportunities for people to steal your camera. So be careful out there. Now on the Reason number three, privacy or privacy, as they said, overseas across the pond. I have a DSLR with a bigger lens, which gives everyone the impression I'm invading their privacy because no one wants to see this big camera staring at them in the face. Imagine having a Z6 III with its larger body and lenses. It screams these photos are being used for professional use. They might even end up in a mag overseas. Let me tell you a quick story about previously while I was in London. Uh, while I was at the 
Windsor Castle, I took a photo of a group of school children that I wanted to show my grandkids. I had walked away from the scene. 10 minutes later, I was asked to delete the photos by a charming older lady. I didn't know whether she was part of a security detail or she was just a concerned citizen. She watched as I deleted the photos. I don't know whether these children were high profile or members of the royal family. I've just compiled because I didn't want to get my passport taken away and that's what you fear when you're overseas. I can't wait to get back to America where you can put a camera in someone's face. Now the final reason, reason number four, quality of photography. Now the Nikon D3100 isn't a professional camera, but for travel photography, you can't go wrong unless you just buy a bad copy used of this camera. At $100 and up, this basically makes it a disposable camera. Taking photos on the ocean from the deck of a cruise ship is a breeze. If you happen to drop the camera, it's disposable. You wanna know the keeper rate of this camera? Forget about it. As long as you stay in the light, you're good. It exposes well in the light, but in the dark, even with the pop-up flash, some of the photos are actually usable. Don't pixel peep these photos when I show them to you. These are for fun. I use this iPhone Pro Max to take photos of landscape, me and my wife, and other scenery. It was excellent. It was a good standby when I didn't have the Nikon D3100, and it, they just work great together. When I didn't have this camera available or when I was in a tight space, I could use this camera. This combo works great. So think about it when you're traveling and you'll come out on top. When you don't wanna carry this or you don't wanna carry a book bulky camera, then you can have this available. This works just as well. The photos from the iPhone 15 Pro Max are great. If you wanna post something once you get back in the USA, you can post it while you're staying at the airport waiting on your next flight. Unlike this digital camera where you have to take it out, put it in the laptop, and then post it, and maybe even process it. For all you photography guys out there, which photos do I prefer? I prefer the Nikon D3100. Here are some photos, and if I didn't tell you which camera took the pictures, would you even know the difference? I will post the photos online so you can examine them for yourself. The site to my European trip will be in the descriptions. Please remember that the camera you have in your hands is the camera you need. Having a Nikon Z63 or a Nikon Z9 doesn't mean you always have to carry these cameras when you have a versatile camera like this Nikon D3100. And as always, please subscribe and watch my other videos on Nikon cameras and thank you for watching.